Hey folks, welcome to Truck King. Today we're looking at this, the 2023 Land Rover Defender. Now the Defender has to be one of the most luxurious off-roaders on the market, and that hasn't changed. What has changed with this 130 model is, well, just look how long it is. Land Rover has tacked an extra 13 inches onto the rear end, so we're gonna take a drive and find out, is this bigger Defender actually better? Let's start with the walk around. So powering this Defender 130 is the P400 powertrain. That consists of a three liter inline six turbocharged engine and a mild hybrid setup. Total system output here is 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. And all of that is sent through a ZF eight speed automatic transmission. Now the actual Defender you're looking at right here is the Defender 130 First Edition, which basically means it is fully loaded. It gets some unique styling, including the colors, which are unique to this trim. And then it also gets things like the towing package, the nicer interior luxury package. And when we're talking about towing too, I should mention capability, 8,200 pounds you can put behind this thing, which is a pretty serious number. And let's go look at the door jam sticker to see the payload. All right, well, with the Defender this size, I mean, you just know we've got to see if Steve fits. Absolutely. I mean, this is really the big deal about this model, right, is the second row and then that third row. So right here, this is 38.8 inches of second row legroom. And what I want to show you is, look how adjustable this seat is. I mean, you can really push it forward. So if you do have someone big in the third row, you can give them that much space. Now, I'm going to put it all the way back. And this is my driving position. And, well, it's actually pretty good. I have enough knee room. I have plenty of headroom up here too. I stand at six foot two. And then I can also reach down here. And this seat's got not much, but maybe about two inches of recline. So I can even recline. Yeah, definitely as second rows go, this one is pretty good. But uh, the third row is more important. So let's climb back there now. And now let's climb into that third row. So the second row here folds forward and then pushes all the way up which leaves an okay amount of space, but it's still a little tricky for me to get back here. And now we pull this back. And actually, I fit okay. I, I guess I wasn't expecting to, I don't know why, but I fit pretty dang well. I have enough headroom up here. I have enough knee room. Again, this seat is adjustable, so it could probably come back or go forward, which is really, really nice. I got my headrest up. And then one thing I don't think I have ever seen this is a heated third row seat. That is pretty handy. Plus the third row has its own little sunroof back here. Yeah, you know what guys? I'm happy this third row is so big. If you're gonna make a big vehicle like this with the third row, you might as well make it usable for a larger than full size adult. And this one absolutely is. And here I go. Whoop. <laughs> No, not graceful. It's important that you can fit people, but what about cargo? Let's open up the rear end here. And of course the Defender has the big swing gate back here. So behind this third row, you're getting 13.7 cubic feet of storage space. Not horrible, but not a ton of space. But of course you can fold it. And I should mention now, uh, both rows, second and third, they go 40, 20, 40, which is a really unique split. You don't see that that often. I think it's really cool if you have something long you want to put down the middle, maybe like skis or a hockey stick, because that's what we do here in Canada. So once you put that second or that third row down, you're getting just about 45 cubic feet of space, which is quite a bit. Now, as for features back here, there's a couple. First of all, you are getting a plug over here along with the 12 volt outlet. And then maybe the coolest one, a couple of buttons here, which are just for the rear air suspension. So you can bring it up or you can drop it down. Now you probably are thinking, why would you want to do this? Well, our first thought was when you're hooking up a trailer, it's really nice to be able to adjust your vehicle rather than having to adjust the height of the trailer to get under there and lift it up. Now on the flip side, when you bring it all the way down, this is just frankly easier to load stuff in. So if you are back here and you got something heavy to put in, you're buying yourself a couple of inches. I think that is pretty cool. 
And now here we are driving in this Land Rover Defender 130. And actually, we've put a lot of time in behind the wheel of this thing. If you watch the channel, you would have seen our Ram 2500 Rebel review, while this Defender was our ferry to and from Calabogie, Ontario, from the Toronto area where we live. So it's about a four hour drive each way. So we've, uh, we've got a lot of time in here. Yep, a couple. So I think now, Dad, I'll just throw it to you right off the bat and just say, uh, what do you think about the way the Defender drives? And do you notice the fact that this is the 130 and you got a longer rear end back there? Uh, to that question, no. Um, until you start doing something squirrely and then the back end really whips out on you. However, you know what? It's a nice, comfortable, uh, quiet vehicle, mm -hmm. and then again, for a hundred grand, it better be. <laughs> yeah, loads of power from that turbocharged 6 2 and really smooth power, which I like as well. So, with everything you've already seen, Dad, I think we clearly outlined why you would get a 130, and that is because you want to haul a bunch of people or a bunch of stuff maybe tow a decent sized trailer. So then the question becomes, well, why would you get a Defender over say, you know, a competing luxury SUV? And I think the answer is off-roading. There's no doubt that Land Rover pays close attention, especially with the Defender, to off-roading. And in this model, we just have so many different electronic systems that are helping us go off-road. So first of all, we get all the different drive modes, uh, mud and ruts, grass, gravel, snow, know and and I gotta tell you what one of the things I think Land Rover does better than anyone else is giving you the information about each one of those drive modes when you go into that 4x4 information screen it outlines exactly what that drive mode is gonna do for you which a lot of other companies don't do so I do appreciate that amount of information it also just has some pretty dang good numbers now all of these numbers are with the air suspension fully lifted but you are getting an approach angle here of 37 and a half degrees Degrees, a departure angle of 28.5 degrees and a breakover of 27.8 degrees plus ground clearance at 11.4 inches which are all some pretty respectable off-road numbers. So one of the systems we actually put into practice because no we're not actually going off-road today um, is the low traction control launch. So basically what this is going to do is if you're on sand or for us in our case snow and ice you hit that button and it's going to allow you to have a nice smooth takeoff every single time and we can show it to you here. So the first time dad just put his foot to the floor and watch the Defender take off. And it hooked up really good too, right? A nice set of winter tires. Yeah, absolutely. The four-wheel drive, it really went. And that was icy too. And then he put on that low traction control launch and see it here. The Defender takes off super slowly and smoothly. And there's nothing you can do with your right foot to make it not take off slowly and smoothly. So uh, I think that's actually a practical feature, Dad. Forget about off-roading. You could leave that on every day so then when you're taking off from a stoplight in the snow, you're not going to end up getting uh, squirrely or breaking loose at all. Well, there's no doubt that, you know, for some people who do not have a lot of practice with driving in snow, uh, rather than learning stuff the hard way, this uh, takes some of that danger out of it. Sure. And then I guess uh, the final point on that is just to say that yes, the drive modes make a big difference. That's been our experience with this Land Rover is when you're changing those modes, when it does all the different things that it does, uh, it makes a big difference. I Another thing it adjusts, I just wanted to add in, is the air suspension. I was just going to say that. <laughs> there you go. Great minds, right? So here on our Defender 130, air suspension is a standard feature, um, and it's hugely appreciated when you're going off-road. Again, even in the deep snow, it's nice to be able to lift your body up a couple inches or then slam it down to the ground if you're loading it. Or heck, maybe you live in an apartment building and you got to duck under a low roof. Yeah, so that's, that's very good. Too. Getting into an underground. Exactly. So yeah, no, love the air suspension. And you know what, it goes without saying too that for towing, that's always a great feature. Now the thing that's worth mentioning about a Land Rover is that you are getting a unique styling, um, if you like bricks, because that's what it looks like. However, the interior definitely is different from anything else in this price range. So, first off, if you got a hundred grand to go shopping with, then you may very well be the guy who says, you know what, for this amount of money, I want something that's a little bit different. And I mean, you can look 
at a G-Wagon, so a Mercedes. You can look at top of the line Lexus. You can look at the American brands. You can look at, you know, the granddaddy of them all, the Suburban and, and kit it out. But I'll tell you something, this doesn't look like any of those. Mm -hmm. So if spending your 100 G's for you also means I want to stick out. I want people to comment on how unique my vehicle is. Well, that's what you're buying when you get into this Land Rover. Yeah, you're absolutely right because we test a lot of those other brands more regularly and when you get in here, it doesn't feel like any of that. Now, one other point specifically on Defender because with this new generation Defender, it went unibody, it went to independent front suspension, it basically became more like the other Land Rover and Range Rover products. Yeah, very much right? so. It is not the Defender of old. No, it's not as differentiated. One of the things though I like about the interior is we get all the luxury stuff, but they still have hints of a little bit of the utilit utilitarian nature, such as the exposed bolt heads. Those aren't on or those aren't by accident. Those are on purpose. They still want you to feel, even if it's not really true, like this thing is a little bit more rough and tumble than the rest of the lineup, including to add those fake kind of steel fenders those are a nod to the old series 2 yeah back fenders. in the day you could walk on those literally you right you wouldn't want to walk on these no so yeah just little things but that's it within the land rover lineup if you go defender you're going to get a few of those more off-road rugged feeling things if you go for a range rover range rover sport it'll just be kind of pure luxury. well the other thing that jumps out at me is the storage um, ideas and designs inside sure. here there i mean you got to see some of this unique uh, center console with these open spaces underneath it which would probably make my wife happy because she's always going where's my purse go I go so leave it at home <laughs> um, and and various, even just right up here all yeah, this storage right? yeah they, like I said so when you look at the interior design here you won't see this anywhere else and then another feature I really liked that first of all all of the camera systems it's got a ton of cameras they work at full speed too which is interesting some brands will only give you it for a couple seconds at full speed some brands won't give you the camera at all Land Rover gives you full access to all the cameras yeah, at they don't, full speed yeah they don't shut off they say it's not recommended over 40 but they don't actually shut them off so again just a different uh, approach to it and then probably one of the coolest things I've seen in the cameras is that underneath camera the underbody camera now it's not actually a camera underneath the body what it does is it takes constant pictures of what's just in front of the defender and then it overlays those pictures onto a little out line of the front half of your vehicle essentially showing you what's underneath and again I've seen these systems in Toyotas and they only ever work at really slow speeds here in the Defender it works at full speed um, and yeah I just think it's really cool now we have gotten to the point I, I, have <laughs> no, so much to say. No, I was just thinking you know with this one you, you you never actually have a question as to did, did I hit the squirrel did, did I hit the squirrel <laughs> you want to see it on the camera that is true well, folks, we're coming to the end of this one. Now, the Defender 130 here, it starts at $93,000 here in Canada, and then fully loaded, you're going to get up to right around $113 thousand dollars so it's not going to come cheap but i think we can both agree that it is a luxurious suv it's got more than average off-road capability and then if you get the 130 for the big rear end well it's got a big rear end that'll fit uh, a lot of people and a lot of stuff any other finishing uh, thoughts Dan? no i was gonna say that is the that is the unique feature because of course it, there there is that market for that large suburban like vehicle which is actually quite a busy uh, market niche so yeah that's where they want to play in yeah absolutely i think they nailed it so yeah that's it for this one folks now please go below let us know what you think of this land rover defender 130 as always while you're down there don't forget to hit like hit subscribe hit join to become a member of truck king and then come back here to the channel to see what we are testing next